A lot of artists are about to make more money than ever before. You need to make sure that you are one of them because this opportunity is one of the biggest moments in music history for artists in making money in the last decade easy. And it's not about a new tech platform that's going to help you monetize your fan base. It's not about a new strategy to use to monetize your fan base. It's one simple thing that could occur. And it's a real possibility because a bill has been put forth before the U.S. Congress that aims to force streaming services like Spotify, Apple, etc. to pay artists one cent per stream. And I know that doesn't sound like a lot of money, but you have to think. We're basically coming from half of a cent to one cent. Every every streaming platform I know doesn't pay the exact amount, but we're talking about half a cent to one cent. But there's also other aspects of this that you got to keep in mind. And this is a big lesson. And we're going to talk about three primary things that you need to know whether this happens or not, because it'll change the way you do the game. All right. First and foremost, Corey, this is something I think most people are missing. Okay. All these catalogs that have been bought over the last five years, Oh, Paul McCartney or insert name, 400 million, 70 million. You see all these numbers. Yeah. Ooh, these artists are hitting a lick. Man, that's a lot of money. But think, if this happens, the day that you can do nothing but your money doubles, now it starts to make sense why, oh, of course I'm going to invest in these catalogs because I'm aware not only of what the worth of the catalog is over time, I know that it could be a simple bill that gets passed that doubles the amount. Not even the work that I can put in by pitching it to sync deals, by figuring out how to monetize fans and listenership. My investment just doubled overnight without doing anything but maybe, you know, taking one of the Congress members out to put some Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Now, that's a good point because it's something I hadn't thought about either personally. But then when you think about a bill of this magnitude, there's no way it made it that far. And then the powers that be on that side didn't know it was about to get there. And you might be right. Like, it might have been a point where they were like, hey, we can either fight this or we can just make sure we're on the right side of history. Yes. You know <laughs> when, when, yes. When this shit does inevitably hit. Yep. And this is the problem with selling off your assets and it makes it so difficult in music. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, you know, artists, I know many of y'all might not be in a point where it makes sense to sell your music or someone has an offer that's big enough for you. You know, you're not at that point in your career, but but trust me, even understanding this mindset, because when it comes to your 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 music, the value, right? It looks like it's linear to most people. Oh, I'm making $100,000 a month or $100,000 a year. And you multiply that by about 10 years and it might get a little bit lower. And that's how they're thinking about it. But the future of art is not fixed. Yep. Right? Yep. The problem that we have when it comes to art and monetizing art is at the end of the day, it's this intellectual property. That's the core of it. And we haven't even had the technology to be able to properly monetize most of these years. So you have all these other industries that win and you can monetize it because it's very easy. Oh, I have a cow, buy my cow. Oh, my cow makes milk. Here's the milk that my cow makes. You got to buy it to get it. But the intellectual property is, is something less tangible. And we've been building these tools right, over time that starts to make it possible to track and capture more value in it. Right, The internet messed up what we could get because the cow that you traded in the terms of music before was a CD, right? Yeah. Then it got digitized into MP3, but it still was gated in some level. Piracy happened, bam, floodgates opened. Now we had to the, develop the ability to track it. So because of that, the amount of money that you can make in the future, right, you have no idea. Because all it takes is one thing to happen, a bill, all of a sudden, oh yeah, no, they need to be making at least this much. And then outside of a bill, a new form of uh, monetization that happens because just like TikTok popped up and all of a sudden everybody wanted to monitor, uh, like consume through short form, mm -hmm. there could be something that happens that makes people want to buy differently from artists, right? Or consume music in a completely different way that raises the value, yeah. right? Yeah. So that. There's all these things and I just never want people to undervalue themselves. And I know you have to 
make a decision based on the number you can get and at least have a plan for the money that you get if you do decide to sell. But just know, man, these people are investing this money not even just for the calculation of what you're you're making today and what that looks like over 40 years. That's the downside. That's the floor of the investment. Okay, we know we'll at least make this much, but they're really investing on that upside. We're going to guarantee ourselves to make money and potentially make something that we can't even imagine. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting too because, I, like I said, calculating future money is, is so tricky because there's another element to it I don't think any artist really thinks about. Very few. Maybe ones that's been here for a decade or longer probably think about it, but I don't think new artists think about it. And that is the impact that you have on the next generation of music and what that entails, right? So I, I have two really good examples that are happening right now. One, we saw what happened with um, Swag Surfing when the Super Bowl came around, right? <laughs> yeah. Song, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Huge moment. Um, it, it is a, a, a cultural landscape. In certain, I mean, not cultural land, but a, a cultural, uh, what am I looking for? Artifact in, in, in certain ways mm. in the black community. That song comes and has a massive cultural resurgence because of, 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 of you know, Pat Mahomes and, and the ties of him. And that's something that, like, you know, when they made that song 10, 20 years ago, there's no way they could have seen, hey, 20 years from now, the fucking top NFL quarterback is going to want to use this for it, like, yep. his, his song. Another great example, I think, is, like, currently, um, I know Sexy Red just sampled, like, a Hurricane Chris song. For mm. her newest single right this is like her big single right now it's like her comeback yep. after the pregnancy this is the one you can tell the label like really investing everything in once again you know what i'm saying you, you i i don't I, I feel like it's hard to believe a world where young hurricane chris saw that 20 10 20 years from now the, the, a new popping artist is gonna sample me and, and now i'm making the bag off of that and like you know especially now in the way that music works is, is i think it's really it's not hard for artists to see the potential for their future impact, I think a lot of them don't pay attention to it because it requires them to pay attention to other artists. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So you, you kind of miss like the impact that you might have. Or you might miss like, hey, like there's this guy in my fan base telling me how much he loves me. It might be this 14-year-old kid that eight years from now samples me and, and, and blows the fuck up and now I'm making money off of that. So like, yeah, you're right. It's like, it's like all these intangibles, some that you can kind of calculate for, like like you said, streaming and, and royalties and things like that. You can, you can make a, a safe like, educated guests but then there's mm -hmm. all these other intangibles like you said new platforms new tech um in, impact on on culture fucking you know how many times have we seen sync companies pick up songs from yesteryear and just, just you know re-blow it up so it's, it's, yep. it's, it's all these things that basically made me agree with you you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like it's like <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just feel like it's hard for me to envision a world where as an artist like you know you already sacrifice so much to get whatever you get and a lot of times it's not a lot. And because it's not a lot, that would make me feel like more artists might as well just stick it out and see where it go. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you weren't about to cash out crazy anyway. Why not see where the where the momentum goes if you just keep riding it out? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I want to drop a quick note for anybody who has a fan problem. And not just any old fan problem, but the type of fan problem that we encountered after helping a lot of artists go viral, have a lot of success, get a lot of streams, but still not being able to know who exactly are my fans? How do I reach them? How do I actually leverage that to sell merch, go to a show? Because that's where Spotify leaves us without knowing who our real people are. Same for social media. If you've had this problem, I'll tell you how we've been solving it at our agency for a while now. And the pro version is just now being released to be accessible to any artist or manager out there. I'm talking about Forever Fan. A lot of the campaigns and successes that y'all have heard us talk about on this channel have been powered by that software that's made finding and understanding your true fan simple so they support you with their pockets. Because we all need a little money in this music thing. And now they're making it available to our audience for only $1 at foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels, no labels with an S at the end. And you got to put in the code no labels zero two. All right. Now, look, the DSPs, the social media platforms, I think they've shown us how much they care about artists for a while now. So at this point, we can all play naive or actually do something about it. Bet on yourself at foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels. And again, put in the code no labels zero two to get initial access for only one dollar.
let's get back to this episode. That's what <laughs> you actually are touching on a life strategy that I have. Okay. I don't believe in sacrificing discomfort for comfort. I'll sacrifice discomfort for abundance. Okay. But mm, just comfort, comfort is one step away from discomfort. So I might as well mm-hmm. stay in this space. And I'm gonna be real disappointed if I land back in discomfort. Yeah. Right? It's not enough. It's not right enough on. For it's right on that line, <laughs> and that's why how people end up caught. Cause now you're like two steps away from discomfort and you're always fending that off. It's like, nah, I need to be in an abundance. So I might as well wait it out and get a bigger upside, yeah. you know, cause I'm, while I'm used to this and you know, if I slide back five steps, it was like, well, shoot, man, I got plenty of comfort over here. You know, <laughs> I could, I could keep losing, but that that's, that's point number one, right? The value of your music can change just like that. Like the, the value that's able to be captured, which is the most important part, because there's so much untapped value in your music. But here's point number two. So just a, a, a basic Google, you know, these numbers can always change. But titles average payout per stream is point one two eight four. Mm-hmm. All right. Dollars, by the way, which means that's one cents, one point two eight four cents. So that's above where it's going. They're already above. Right. So that might drop a little bit. Not that you're relying on your title streams too much. Right now they're saying Apple Music is point zero zero eight, which so point two more it would, would be a stream. Yeah. Amazon Music is point zero zero four. That's less than half a cent. Uh, Spotify is point zero zero three. Mm-hmm. YouTube is point zero zero two. Pandora is point zero zero one. Deezer is point zero zero one. So those two would literally ten x. Yeah, that's crazy. Right? Well, would these be affected since it's not a, it's not a U.S. Well, I'm assuming because of just the way you know they have to do laws yeah. and you know, like if you're getting streams from that space, yeah. Like so, yeah. any streams coming from the U.S. because this is U.S. specific, right? Oh, everybody hate that. That's another that's another <laughs> note, right? But what's the important point of that? Like, what's point number two? Predictability, right? Because you have no way of knowing. It's very hard to track. Like, oh, I'm getting this much money from this platform yeah. just because I got this many streams. Yeah, we have these platforms that are capturing it and telling you, like, from a day by day. But just from a, like, simplicity, I'm new artist in the business. How do I really make my money? Oh, okay, I know if I get X amount of streams on all these platforms, I'm getting paid the exact same amount. Yeah, true. All right? So I can predict, I can do the math that, oh, if I get a th- hundred thousand streams, I'm making a thousand dollars, and many of y'all have done a hundred thousand streams. That's a lot more achievable, you know what I mean, to get to that thousand dollars versus having to do two hundred thousand streams to make a thousand dollars. So, and then shoot on some of these platforms, basically that's saying you have to get near a million streams yeah. just to get a thousand a thousand dollars, which is crazy, all right? So to have that level of predictability changes. The business model from the investor standpoint, like, oh, I want to pour more in here. I can invest more in these artists, even indie artists, because things seem to be a lot more predictable, which allows me to take a little bit more of a risk. And then from an artist standpoint, it helps me build my lifestyle around this a lot more. Because right now, at best, artists are being paid out like waitresses. Like, oh, I might get this amount in tips today, I might get that amount in tips today. How much is this platform paying me? Oh, they're saying they're paying me 0.003 on Spotify, but what if the person is streaming me from a different country? What is the person is streaming me from the free tier versus the premium tier? The payouts are not the same. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's when we get to the next level, though. Next level is people don't talk about this other part of what this thing says. So you say the the current rate of Spotify is 0.003 to 0.005. And they're going to be mandating that if you're in the U.S., you are paying out one cent per stream, 2x. That's beautiful. But the statement goes on to continue. And this is um, according to one of the, the reps, Tlaib and ba- Bauman. I think I'm saying that right. Or Tlaib and, and Bauman. Something. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. The royalty would be funded through platform subscription fees and a 10% levy on non-subscription revenue. 
and is the and is designed to ensure artists receive a minimum of one penny per stream. Now, there's even a little bit more of this, but I'm going to hold on that. This stuff is actually more surprising and more interesting than y'all think. Everybody wants to go to the headline. But where's the money coming from? Platform subscription fees. And I guess if they're doing it for free, free tiers, a 10% levy that they're going to collect and create a pot for non-subscription revenue because you can't just say oh everybody listens for free and we don't have subscribers so we can't you know pay yeah. pay any money out that way yeah. okay that's interesting now i saw a comment where somebody said something that's pretty true they said it as a joke but eh, they're like spotify subscription is about to be up at 50 dollars what do y'all think about that Maybe not fifty. It's probably gonna hit at least twenty five, bro. I'm not looking forward to it. All right, so that's that's the joke, right? But the reality of it is, if y'all don't think that it won't be felt by either the consumer or the artist, boy, you are sadly mistaken. All right, not gonna be felt by the company. The consumer, ooh, the company has to be a little touchy with that. We don't want to lose this customer because really that's the only reason the artists are coming to us anyway. So they have a priority over, over us. Yep. You know what I mean? So, okay. Artist, look, man, y'all want these streams, right? So we got to make sure they don't have to pay too much on the consumer side. How are we going to impact you as an artist? And why I say, if you didn't understand these basic economics before recently, as an artist, if you've been active over the last six months, you should understand this by pure example of what happened with Spotify cracking down on bots. And, oh, distributors, you're going to have to pay us. We're going to have to pay y'all what? Um, hey, artists, <laughs> Spotify said that y'all got to pay up because y'all getting uh, y'all got all these bots going on. You're like, wait, when did Spotify say that? I thought Spotify said that y'all, no, no, I don't listen to that. Spotify said that y'all, <laughs> the artists have to pay for this. Like, it's it's a messed up game of telephone, right? The, the company is always going to pass down the the, 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 the the price, right? If, if you get taxed in government and say, oh, well, we go up from 5% tax to 7% tax. Well, hey, when you get that French fry as a consumer, you know, when it went from a dollar to a dollar seven cents, it's like, oh, yeah, because they're getting... Like, we're not going to pay for it. Yeah, that's what's so interesting about it, man. Because the discourse I've been seeing around it, it's been two mentalities I see, right? Mm -hmm. I've been seeing a win is a win mentality, right? So, you know, fuck who get fucked over in the crossfire, a win is a win. Okay. And then the other side of it, I should see, debate that. Is there a win or is there a loss? Yeah. I, okay. And I've seen, you know, the other side of it being artists that feel like this is a win against, like, the major system, like this mm. is a win against the powers that be, those those eyes in the sky that dictate everything from above. But with like everything you just said makes the latter point not true, right? It's like it's not really a win against the industry because, you know, the, the labels are gonna make sure they're not getting, I mean, to them, they're like, we also make more money and we ain't gotta come out of pocket to make it happen. Great, it's a win for us. Yes, like I said, Spotify, Apple, Title, all of them are going to be like, eh, you know, we're not really trying to take on that call. So it's really not a win against the the major system. It is a it, it is arguably a, a win in some senses, but it's really it's really a smack against the consumers. You know what I'm saying? And what is interesting about it is, you know, artists talk from the standpoint of it making the the art space better, and you know how much happier and and, and things are to be, which is true. But the side of it they don't think about is that fans don't pay attention to all the shit that is making you feel that way. So and, and the average fan probably doesn't know the, the, the per stream payout rate. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. The average, the average don't fan, know, don't care. Don't Exactly. Don't know, don't care. So all I know is that I wake up one morning, I unlock my phone, and I see you know a little notification saying, hey, yo, yo, yo. Your price on Spotify going up to twenty five ninety nine, whatever the fuck it go to. I really feel like it's gonna hit twenty five dollars. My now I'm forced in a position, right? I'm not sitting here thinking like, oh great, artists are getting paid more. No, I'm thinking like, damn, bro, that shit just went up sixteen dollars. That's that's you know what I'm saying. That's every month is now damn near three months worth of streaming service payout yeah. compared to what I was used to paying to. Now I have to make a really tough decision. 
do I pay this money and and let Spotify, you know, dig me over like that? Or do I find something new to do with, you know, with, with my time and my energy? Do I maybe I start watching more movies? Maybe I start <laughs> looking at more YouTube, getting on TikTok a lot more. I don't know, but it puts the fans in like a really precarious situation. And like I said, I don't I don't want to use that as an example to say like it shouldn't be done, but I, it's a side of it I don't think music artists are thinking about. And you brought up a really good point that I hadn't I hadn't got to that conclusion yet, but I think I was on the way there. But it's like, all right, artists get paid more, streaming platforms raise the price, people are naturally gonna leave because of that. Now the overall streaming pot goes down. So then I like I can see a world where artists are getting paid more money per stream. But it's still making about the same or less because so much of the consumer base got ran away. I could I could see a world where that kind of happens. Well, there's, there's there's something that I'm gonna read in the rest of it that might touch on that point too. There, there's there's some more there. There's <laughs> definitely some more there. Um, <laughs> but you know, will a will a statistically relevant amount of fans leave streaming platforms, DSPs in particular? That would be interesting to see. That'd be crazy. But I think that <laughs> what's important to consider, like this, I think that at minimum, this is a win regardless because it's showing artists as legitimate working, working class. Yeah, agree. I agree with that. To acknowledge artists as a legitimate working class that deserves to be paid is a huge win because the perception of it alone, right, takes things from, hey, artists are only celebrities and why are we even thinking about them in that way? Like, we don't need to think about how much they make or or what they should make or anything like that to know these are people that there's multiple tiers of and there's people who are working hard and need to be able to fund their lives because if the minimum wage can go from $7 to $15 at a McDonald's, because inflation is happening in real life and they haven't caught up. That does mean at some point, if we're looking at artists as a working class, that means that minimum wage needs to be lifted. Yeah, that's, All a, right? good point. Yeah, that's a good point. So like that perception is like extremely valuable for an artist. Now, with that being said, got some reading to do. <laughs> <laughs> the royalty would be paid out proportionally from a central fund with a cap placed mm -hmm. on how much individual tracks can earn mm -hmm. to ensure a more equitable distribution of payments. So what they're saying is you will make more compared to previous iterations of you, but there's now a, there's now a ceiling on how much you can make. That's basically what it's saying, right? Like, you're going to get paid more for the same amount of work, but we're going to stop you at some point or stop it at some point. That's the part that's weird, yeah. right? <laughs> because they don't define the cap yet, right? And not defining a cap doesn't allow us to do, like, a legitimate breakdown or, or projection. Yeah. But I don't imagine that they can cap it. They can't just cap the amount of money you're making. They can't just say... All right, he's only gonna make a amount of um he's only gonna get paid for his first million streams and he's not gonna be paid for any streams after that because exactly. you still have to get paid yeah. for your streams. Like legally, unless they change that law, they can't change that part of it, right? So I'm thinking it has to be the amount that there's a cap to. So it's almost like let's mm, mm, let's give you a fast track to minimum wage. And once you're at minimum wage, you're on your own. Yeah. Something like that, right? So we'll fast track you to the equivalent of, let's say, $15 an hour for an artist, whatever that looks like from a streaming perspective. But then after that, maybe it's going to end up dropping to, all right, Back to the regular rate. whatever those regular rates yeah. were or some new renegotiated rate. That's all I could I could think of. But that cap is a real thing. This isn't infinite. So you're probably not going to be able to be like, oh, man, this person has a billion streams. Well, what's 1% of a billion? Oh, snap. They got, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. That, 
Like, it's not going to work like that. You can't just be like, oh, 10 million off of that alone. Yeah, it's so interesting, man, because it's, it's so much, it's so many nuances borrowed from like the Instagram credit fund. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's so interesting the impact that Meta creating that program had on everything mm-hmm. else, right? Because it, it taught these platforms that, man, people will, will work really hard if the cap is a, a big number that sounds unachievable. Because when, when, think about with Meta. When Meta first announced, yeah, we got a billion dollars for creators, motherfuckers are like, that shit was going to last. Because the billion sounds like a lot. You know what sounds like, like a lot. You're like, man, that shit going to last forever. That shit was two and a half years, bro. Yeah. A billion dollars burnt through in two and a half yep. years. And it's really interesting the impact that that model had on, even though they didn't continue to do it. It's like you saw other platforms look at it and go like, man, that kind of worked. Like people, like that two and a year, two and a half years, you got exactly what you want. Of a creditors are working overtime, working hard, giving you some of their best, their best mm-hmm. ideas. You know what I'm saying? Look, a yeah. couple people got to float themselves up out of out of bad situations and give us a great case study and, and a great, you know what I'm saying, story to tell. Yep. And that's the only direction I can see that going is like, hey, like you said, hey, you get a penny per stream until you hit this amount. And then when you hit this amount, yeah, it drops back down to whatever the normal rate was. Yeah. That's so interesting, man, because that's crazy. Yeah, it's going <laughs> <laughs> to it's, it's gonna be something else, man. And, and something else you touched on earlier is people thinking it's a win against the powers that be. Like this just goes into improper math, improper thinking. And I remember I dropped a video more recently and some people were like, oh, man, this dude must be a plant because he's defending the labels by basically saying that in this particular battle, y'all are on the same side against TikTok. No, paying artists more is paying artists more. You are an artist. Doesn't matter that there's somebody in the fight that you don't like. They happen to be on your side. You ever heard of an enemy of my enemy is a friend of me? Like, that's all it is. It's that simple. It doesn't mean that, like... Any of these labels care about your heart, you know, your soul, your family, not your music. No, no, I'm not saying any of that. It, ma- it makes me think about like the superhero movies where there's such a, there's a such a big, you know, uh, new villain that like the hero and the old villain for like yep. the team up to stop. It's exactly got to squad like, up for yeah. a bit. It's <laughs> just like dang. So we're gonna take this shit down, and once it's done, we back to being enemies. But for the next two and a half hours of this movie, bro, we gotta do. What we gotta that, do. Bro. That's exactly <laughs> that's exactly what's occurring because they get paid from your money, yeah. so they need to get you paid more so they can take more. That's all it is. It's all it is. Now, of course, on the other end of it, the artists who are independent, they just benefit from all of the yeah. the upside, yeah. right? And even the artists who are signed, you're making a bigger portion, assuming that your deal is fixed, because it'll be wild. <laughs> yeah, like, like you're still getting paid out on the ratio. Yeah, the exact same amount. It's like, oh yeah, like you got a cap on a, on a proportion. That'll be wild. So assuming, even assuming then, right, if you got paid, if if you had a 50-50 deal, right, if it went from $100 paid to $200 paid, you are now making still double the money, right? So all artists are going to benefit regardless. Now, the labels, where y'all want them to fall on, labels should benefit as well. Anybody, the the music industry will benefit from it in some way. Now, where are the hidden costs? That is the question that we have to constantly ask. What does it look like on the fan side? What is the the pressure point where you can't go beyond that threshold because it's going to make that number of fan payout go way lower than you want to, right? But then also, how much can we put on the artist? How do we even figure out how to take money from the artist? from the artists in this equation. Cause that's something that the industry has been good at. Like <laughs> the different actors, yeah. like how do we figure out, <laughs> you know, how we can tell, okay, we can't go direct. We gotta get two steps ahead. Ooh, okay, we're gonna build these new platforms that force the artists to pay us or whatever on the load. No, I don't get out of that. <laughs> it's not a bag that, I don't, that, that anybody is ready for. Uh, <laughs> but with that being said, with that being said, man, like where will artists put the put the bill? Like that's I think that's the resounding question. Um and who is eating the cost? All right. <laughs> who do who, you want to eat this cost? And, and who do who do you want to eat the cost? 
Is it a win? Is it a loss? I think it's still a win at regardless because it's a great step in the right direction of understanding that there is a new opportunity for a middle class of, of artists and artists who are doing it alone and having this type of relationship versus you're getting signed through an investor. And, and like it, it requires a completely different perspective of the system. So with that being said, you got any final points? One last thing I did think about. I wonder how it's going to affect the distributors, you know, because there were a lot of distributors. I wouldn't even say a rumor because I've seen it with my own eyes. But there were some distributors paying more money than other distributors for the same amount of streams, which I never understood. Would love for anybody to make that make sense to me in the comments on how paying to, artists more. Yeah, you know, like like um, I don't want to say the ones it is, but like I like, you know, like our friend Sam, for example, showed me one time. Like he showed me his statements through one distributor and showed me statements to another, and he was getting paid more money for per stream through one than the other. And like, and I've seen that in a couple of other examples. And like I said, I don't completely understand how they're able to do that and, and make that work. But now it, it makes me think of like, oh, they were doing that as a sales advantage. But now the 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 playing field is about to be leveled across the board. Cause it, you know, it's already hard enough for a lot of those companies to differentiate themselves anyway, just based on where shit has went. That might've been the last thing you could do outside of tech shit is like, hey, I can pay you more money. But then if it's like it's a fixed cost across the board, you know, assuming based on what we saw, yeah, I just, I just, it's gonna be interesting to see how they handle that. That was the last thing I was thinking about. The only thing I, I can think of in terms of answers, potential answers, and you know, maybe people who are watching have the exact answer, is on one end, you know, I would want to get granular. Are all the streams coming from the same places mm -hmm. that they're paying paying out for? Um, you know, like what countries, et cetera, et cetera, did it just happen to stream? Because you know you're not controlling that exactly. Yeah. All right, what does that look like? How big would that gap be? And then on the, because I don't know, you know, those numbers that you saw, so how yeah. big was that gap? Did you Was it pretty big? Uh, it wasn't crazy. It, okay. it was like enough to where like. You, know, like you, would, you would notice? Off, yeah. Okay. Like you would notice it, but yeah. it wasn't like crazy. So maybe that accounts for it. In some cases though, because that doesn't sound like this is, his, because I think he probably would have like just came to this in conclusion. You know, he definitely would have. But you know, some distributors have the agreements where some of them are taking a certain level of percentage, yeah. and then the other ones, yeah. right? So you got the ten percent, the five percent, da da da. da. Yeah. Like, oh, you just pay me a fixed cost forever. I don't care what happens with your career because you're just gonna pay me twenty dollars a month anyway. Yeah. Like, there's all different iterations. So then you had that. Um, but yeah, man, I I think that distributors. Where they're labels, oh, we're happy we're making more. Yeah, good. Period. Distributors, in terms of fixed value ads, it just consistently goes into shoot, customer service, <laughs> basically, marketing and branding straight up. And then on the back end, like how much can you sell the story of what we could do for you if you got to a certain level, if that's something you care about. I think it's always going to fall into those buckets because all these distributors are eating the exact same um, value ads. Like once you get to a certain level, it's like, all right, we're both going to allow you to get paid faster or see what your numbers are on this platform. One might do it first, but the yeah. game evolves so fast. If it's good enough, then all the competition will copy it because you can't ignore um, a legitimate innovation that's going to change how the future yeah. works. Just like everybody, like there's a lot of features that the tech platforms would have that were different. But when TikTok made that short form video hit, everybody was like, dang, okay, we're going to have to just yeah, do this one. Do it, it just is what it is yeah, yeah. because that's the new form of communication. Yeah. Same thing that's, that's happening with these distributors. And I just again say that to go back to, yeah, like I think that that game is a very hard game because it's fragmented and you just have to keep figuring out, well, what's our advantage for the moment? And they have to keep evolving. But artists don't care about distributors and the games that they got to play. But, you know, keep a, keep a note, you know, of, of that because y'all can watch out for what that looks like and maybe yeah. stop overthinking. There goes the point for the artist. Stop overthinking which distributor y'all use. I'm not saying that it doesn't matter at all and you might not find a better experience, but some of y'all got like 20 distributors let me test this one, test this one, test this one. And now you all messed up trying to figure out, like, how do I even log in to distributor number nine because I lost the password. Yeah, like, it's, it's a lot. You overwhelm yourself for yeah, no reason. Crazy. 
You know what I mean? You you'll be better off having one egg and watching the hell out of that egg than having twenty and then you turn around and then one gets stolen by a wolf or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good good point. <laughs> and that's where we can leave it. This is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. I'm Brad Manshaw. And I'm Corey. And we out. <laughs>